All right, welcome to the next lesson of our tutorial series on how to create stack color in Unity. For this lesson, we're going to be creating the color wall prefab, which is a mechanic that changes the color of your player object when your player object passes through it. It'll also change what color of pickup you're allowed to collect. Now to create the color wall, you're gonna to wanna to start with an empty game object. So you click the plus sign and select create empty. I've then renamed this object to be color wall, after which we need to add a quad object as a child. So you'll right click on your empty game object, go down to 3D object and select quad. Now the only change that I've made to the transform of the quad object is I've moved it up to 0.5 in the Y direction. You'll then want to create a new material for this object, which I've called color wall. This is a standard shader with the rendering mode set to fade. I've then changed the albedo color down to about 50% in the alpha channel. Once we have this material created, you'll want to select the quad object and drag it into the mesh render component. We'll then want to go back to the parent object where you'll want to change the scale of this object to something like 10 in the X, or at least so that it spans the width of your platform and three in the Y. Now, because we moved the quad object up 0.5 in the Y direction, as we scale the parent object in the Y direction, the color wall object will only get taller. Next, you'll wanna add a box collider component to this object and turn it into a trigger by enabling the is trigger option. You'll then want to change the size and position of the collider object so that it's sitting in front of your quad object and it spans the width and height with a bit of thickness. The next thing that we need to do is add a script to this object. So here I have a new C-sharp script called color wall. And once it's created, you can drag it into the inspector. Now, before we open the script, you'll want to set the tag of this object to something like color wall, and you'll want to set the layer to ignore raycast. Once you've done that, we can then open up our color wall script. The first thing that we need inside the script is a new variable, which is a serialized field of type color and it's called new color. Then inside our start function, we wanna create a new local variable, also of type color, called temp color, and we're gonna set it equal to new color. We then want to modify the alpha channel of our temp color, so I have temp color alpha equals 0.5 F. We then need to get the renderer component of our quad object. So I have another local variable of type renderer called rend and I'm setting it equal to transform dot get child passing in a zero to get the first child which is our quad object then dot get component and we're looking for a renderer. From here we can then apply the new color to the material of our renderer component. So I have rend dot material dot set color. For the first parameter, we need to pass in the name of what we're modifying. So that is underscore color with a capital C. And the second parameter, we're passing in our temp color variable. Now the last thing that we need to do for this script is add this public function, which has a return type of color and it's called get color. And all we need to do is return our new color variable. Once you have all this, we can save this script and go back to Unity. Inside Unity, you should now see the new color variable, which I've set to a blue. And when you decide on a color for your color wall, you'll also want to save that color as a swatch. Now at this point, we can test our project and you should be able to see that the color wall changes to the color that we have set in the inspector, but the alpha is set to 50%. Now for the second part of this video, we wanna handle the interaction between our player and the color wall, as well as add some additional code to the interaction between our player and the pickup objects. And so for this, we'll open up our player controller script. Inside this script, the first thing that we want to do is add a new function, which is the special onTriggerExit function. This function is similar to the onTriggerEnter function, only this function is executed when an object leaves a trigger. And just like the onTriggerEnter function, this function has a parameter of type collider called other. Inside this function, we first want to check to see what the tag of the other object is. So I have if other.tag equals color wall. We then want to call our set color function and we're passing in the other.get component. We're looking for the color wall script and we're calling the get color function, which returns the color of our color wall. Now this should handle the color change of our player object when it passes through a color wall. Now we want to handle the interaction between the player object and the pickups. And so we'll add some code to our onTriggerEnter function. The first thing that we want to do is add an if statement 
around the line of code where we're calling the update score function. And this if statement is for checking to see if the color of our player matches the color of our pickup. So I have if my color equals other transform dot get component. We're looking for a pickup stack color script and we want to call a new function called get color, which we actually haven't created yet. So I'll jump over to our pickup script. And here we just need to add this public function, which is the same that we added to our color wall script. It's a public function with a return type color called get color. But for this one, we want to return our pickup color variable. Once you have this, we'll save this script and go back to our player controller script. If the color of our player matches the color of our pickup, then we want to increment our player score and update the display, which is what our update score function does. So now let's handle if the color of our player does not match the color of our pickup. To do this, we'll create an else statement. And inside this else statement, we want to do the opposite of everything that we do when the colors match. And the first is to subtract some of our player score. To do this, we can copy the line of code where we're calling our update score function and you can just paste it in here. But then we want to change it so that we're multiplying value by negative one. This will subtract the value of our pickup object from our player's total score. The next thing that we can do is delete the current pickup object. For this, I'm calling the destroy function and I'm passing in other.game object. After which we want to delete the bottom pickup object of our stack and move our stack down. For this, I have an if statement where we're checking to see if parent pickup does not equal null. And Inside this if statement, we have another if statement where we're checking to see if parent pickup dot child count is greater than one. If it is, then we want to move our stack down. So I'm calling parent pickup dot position minus equals vector three dot up times parent pickup dot get child and passing in parent pickup dot child count minus one, which will give us the bottom object in our stack dot local skill dot y, which gives us the height of that object. And that's how much we're moving our stack down, after which we can destroy that object on the bottom. So I'm calling destroy and we're passing in parent pickup dot get child and we're passing in parent pickup dot child count minus one dot game object. We then want to add an else statement for if we only have one pickup object, in which case we want to destroy that one pickup object. So I'm calling destroy and I'm passing in parent pickup dot game object. The last thing that we need to do for this script is add a return outside our if statement where we're checking to see if parent pickup does not equal null. This will make it so that if we run into an object that is not the same color as our player, we won't continue on with this function, adding that object to the bottom of the stack. Now at this point, we want to save all of our scripts and we can go back to Unity. Inside Unity, you'll want to select your player object, then select the my color variable and make a swatch out of this initial color. Then select the pickup objects before your color wall that you want to be good pickups and set the pickup color of those objects to be the same color swatch. It's really important that your good pickups have the same color as your player object. So if I wanted to add a bad pickup before my color wall, I could duplicate one of these pickups, move it forward, and just pick a different color. Then for the good pickups after your color wall, you want to make sure that you set the pickup color to the same color swatch as your color wall. And the bad pickups can be whatever color you want. Once you've done this, you can then test out your project. All right, so when I left click, my player object starts moving forward and I'll be able to collect these red pickups, which stack on each other. This pink pickup will destroy the bottom object from my stack. And as I pass through the color wall, my player object will turn blue. I'll then be able to collect this blue pickup, but this green pickup will destroy the blue pickup. And there we go. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson. Our game's coming along quite nicely, so make sure that you stick with it, and we'll be done with the basic mechanics in just a few more lessons. Now make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be notified whenever we publish new videos.